Orleans now because this is where the oil is thick. This is where the conversion zones are bringing the turtles up into the oil. And we're really glad to be partnering with some community-based organizations here that have a lot of experience on the bayous, a lot of experience navigating, finding the wildlife. We're really hopeful today is a turning point in our efforts to rescue endangered sea turtles from the Gulf oil spill. We were sent a video from a YouTube channel shot by Captain Craig of Captain Mike Ellis. Captain Mike Ellis is a commercial fisherman that went under contract to help with the BP oil spill cleanup efforts. Uh, Mike described the actual procedures where the turtles and wildlife are caught up in the booms that are dragged between the shrimp trawls. The oil needs to be corralled into the proper thickness for burning. He was trying to rescue a sea turtle out of the burn area. He was told to stop. His efforts were obstructed. He was able to provide us a, a legal statement to that effect, which we used with a partner of other nonprofit organizations, including the Center for Biological Diversity, to take BP to court. We took BP to court. BP said, we've been given directions on how to operate by the Coast Guard. We had to pull the Coast Guard into the lawsuit. We're currently in final negotiations of a settlement agreement. They realized right away their endangered species recovery efforts, Marine Mammal Protection Act recovery efforts were not up to par. Agencies are now opening a new chapter. We hope they're telling us now that this is going to enter a new era of wildlife recovery from the Gulf oil spill. We're here to take part. I've got resumes from dozens of scientists from over the country willing to come out here, volunteer their time if need necessary to be part of these efforts that we're leading. We're really thrilled to partner with local community groups like Captain Al and the Gulf Wildlife Rescue Unit. We're really shifting from a pessimistic standpoint to one of a little bit more optimism at this point. When we put out the first alert to our members that sea turtles are being burned alive, thousands of emails were sent within 24 hours of, of us notifying our caring members, really making a difference, really pushing policy change. This is a democracy that we live in, and this is how change occurs. We'll need to figure out final logistics, get final approvals. We want to meet up with the boats. We'll probably have a few items on our wish list for gear to put together. And if we can get a break in the weather, great. If we need to charge through the waves, we'll just have to be extra sharp looking for these sea turtles. The Gulf of Mexico is home of five of the seven world's species of sea turtles. It's a productive ecosystem that is the lifeblood of our nation's seafood industry. The Gulf oil spill was a two-dimensional problem until millions of gallons of dispersants were applied underwater and via the air. And now they've created a three-dimensional problem, exposing all trophic levels in the Gulf to oil and dispersant mix at concentrations that we are not sure of, forming emulsions and bound chemicals that we're not even aware of, creating a giant experiment in the Gulf. And the use of these dispersants and oil in coastal nearshore waters, and in some cases I've heard reports of planes flying directly over beach areas. It's not just the wildlife, it's not just the sea life that's involved in this massive experiment. It's everybody in these coastal communities.